Joining us on the show tonight, the voice and boom of the Bring It Hard rock and roll band Dead Groove, Holly West. Remember, folks, to tip your bartenders, tip your waiters, take a deep breath, and enjoy the show. Glad to have you here, Holly. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Doing good. Doing good. Probably wondering what... <laughs> <laughs> Probably wondering what I'm talking about, eh? With the tip your bartenders and tip your waiters and all that junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of, what, are you at a bar? <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the deal. When I was listening to to Dead Groove, and, and that's the band. We're going to talk about your band, yeah. Dead Groove, right? So when I was listening, it's just, there's so many powerful songs and just such a, such a powerful, hard-hitting band. It reminded me of this club when I lived in Windsor, Ontario, which is is just on the other side of Detroit, Michigan. It used to be called California's. And whenever we'd go there uh, and, and there was a band that was playing that was just a hard hitting band, uh, you know, the announcer would always like the, the stage announcer would be like, hey, tip your bartenders, tip your waiters. The waiters and bartenders always seemed happiest when there was that type of band playing. So I always thought they must be getting good tips because of this type yeah, of music. Yeah. So so I when I thought when I read when I heard your music, I was like, man, that reminds me of California's and, yeah. and just those hard hitting bands bring rock and roll right in your face. eh? Very cool. Yeah, very, very hard rock. That's what we are going yeah. for. <laughs> so look, I, I'm up here north of Toronto. Where are you uh, Where are you coming to us from tonight? In Long Beach, California. Cal and I just said California. Long Beach, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, warm there, no? It's nice. Yeah, it's really nice and warm here. We were just out for lunch and it was nice outside. <laughs> right on. Never, I've never been. I gotta, I keep saying, I gotta make it out to California. I've never been to LA. Cali, never been to Cali. No, oh. at all. Yeah. I was like, when we were driving back, I was like, oh, wow. I just, I'm kind of, I mean, in, I grew up in Dallas and so everything's flat, you know, it's the same trees everywhere, you know. And so I come out, I come out here and I'm, I'm kind of, um, like, it, I'm happy that I get to see palm trees, you know, it's something different. And I know, love palm hills. trees. <laughs> Hills are nice. <laughs> Hills. Water. <laughs> water. <laughs> Lots of water. Lots of water. I, uh, I, palm trees is, I think is my favorite tree. I, um, a number of years ago when I was in Hawaii, I just was like, ah, this is paradise. I want, I want these palm trees at home. Oh, cool. And, uh, a relative of mine who was living in the, in the U S she was coming up here to Canada. And I said, you know, I really wanted to, to buy these little baby palm trees, but they wouldn't allow me to bring them back when I, when I came. Right. I would love these palm trees. Yeah. So she shows up one day and she's got palm trees for me. Wow. <laughs> That's nice. nice yeah. Cool. Yeah. They didn't last though. You might be able to get some there. But I don't know if they'll last. Right no, nah, they turn, they turn into Christmas trees, like pines and stuff, you know, like, That's cool, <laughs> Hey, so listen, Holly, uh, we're, uh, we want to talk about your band. We want to talk about Dead Groove. Um, yeah. But I also want to touch base with you on something else before we get into that. You're also currently playing and touring in an all-female Led Zeppelin tribute band called Zepparella. Yeah. And, and you've unleashed your rock vocals with a full force as a lead singer, but you're still rocking the bass. Absolutely. So it, it doesn't happen often that we see the bass player also doing the lead vocals, but... Do you have a, a preference between the two? Uh, I mean, I like doing both. You know, I, I, I started when I was younger wanting to sing. That was my main thing. I just yeah. I love Whitney Houston and Gloria Estefan and just these really powerful singers. And I always wanted to sing. Um, bass kind of fell into my hands. And because I couldn't really play and sing at the same time when I first started playing bass, uh, you know, I just tried to get really good at bass. And so um, when I finally did decide to do my solo stuff, I didn't want to do an instrumental bass, you know, uh, record because I, I just, that wasn't me anyways. Um, and so I started writing songs and then finally put out a record with my vocals on it in 2017. And then right after that, got into Zeparella. So still, you know, staying true to, you know, my just bass roots, but, uh, always wanting to to explore vocals you know so are are we seeing a transition to vocals with dead groove um or or are you gonna still do both 
uh, both because we really enjoy the, um, I mean, I think Fred and I, I'm not sure about Caesar, but Fred and I definitely like the power trio vibe. Yeah. Um, it's sounding good. So we're looking forward, looking forward to both. Now, just out of curiosity, any, uh, any Susie Quattro influence there with the bass and the vocals or? Yeah, actually, if you look at my record, Mokita, I'm wearing a um, black jumpsuit. It's kind of an homage to, to Susie Quattro when she went on her solo yeah. career, too. Uh, I feel like out of the Runaways, um, you know, she's she has the had the best music as far as I'm concerned, like my my preference. I think her when she did her. I mean, I was a huge John Jett fan, of course, you know, yeah. she kind of a lot of her. Uh, I mean, you can tell in like the stuff that she covered. You know crimson and clover and stuff she it was more soft punk that kind of vibe and Susie quattro was more hard rock yeah. and bluesy and so that's my cup of tea so that's kind of where where i um uh, I, I i really do love Susie quattro i think she's great. yeah you gave me you, you gave me the Susie quattro vibe which is why awesome. i kind of threw it out there so that's great <laughs> <laughs> so um What's it like being the the lone female, um, you know, and doing the vocals in a rock and roll band, like you said, the trio with Dead Group? What, what's that like? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I the juxtaposition between a female band and a male band is, is it, there are a lot of differences there, you know. Uh, but as far as being the only female in, in our band, I mean, uh, you know, Fred and I, we live together. We've been together for several years. So it's kind of like just going out and doing our thing, you know, like. As a couple, we get to go explore the the U.S. together and play shows together and write together, and that's really really cool um, to be able to work with your partner. Um, and as far as Caesar, he, he and I still don't really speak the same language. He doesn't speak a lot of English. I don't speak a lot yeah. of Spanish, so we still have that kind of barrier there. Um, but I mean, I'm not like a um, I'm not a diva, you know. I I, I feel like you know for I'm not the only one setting up. I'm not the only one tearing down. I'm not the only one trying to get shows. I'm not the only one trying to, you know, do the whole the whole thing. You know, we're a team. So that that I think drives us, no matter gender. You know, whatever. Yeah, you just you're just a tight a tight trio is is what it comes down to. And there's no one no one in the band looks at each other like female male. Do you get do you get any of that? Um, you know, when you're out there touring or anything, like, do you notice any difference from fans or others or anything like that? Or yeah, I mean, there's still that <clears throat> that topic of conversation. You know, um, it feels like being because I've been in a lot of girl bands. In fact, most of the bands that I've been in, we've had at least one other female in the band. And um, I mean, I don't know if maybe we've had to work harder, but I know for a fact that we've had to impress more people. You know, or or be more impressive as a female. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the cool thing is that once you are impressive, you know, people understand it, they get it, they don't, they don't like say, oh, well, but she's a girl, you know, <laughs> I feel like the, um, just the whole uh, mindset around that is changing a lot, especially with the females that are coming out in the in the industry as these badass women, you know, and as we're filling the docket more with like women rockers, it's like, okay, cool. Like we we can finally just let go of those stereotypes a little bit. Do you, Holly? Do you feel like in some ways, yeah, you're helping lead that change for other uh, girls that might be watching and and whatnot? I hope so. I mean, yeah. I, I I I would hope that I was influencing someone to do what they wanted to do with their life. Um, you know, it's not an easy job, but it is an easy job. You know, like going up there and playing the show is is easy, but the hard work that comes before the show is, is really hard. Um, you know, you have to learn your instrument. You have to, you know, learn how to perform. You have to learn how to, you know, deliver. Um, and then just the whole, uh, you know, uh, business aspect of it too. Um, it's it's an ongoing process. And so if you are if you want to do it, I feel like you should do it no matter what your gender is or who you are in life. Um, you know, it is what it is. You 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 brought up the business <laughs> side, um, and earlier you said you know what when we're when we're working the business we all work the business. Mm -hmm. Do you as a female in the music industry um, find working the business different than let's say Fred or, or Caesar? The only thing I feel 
like is still lacking is the amount of credibility females can get when trying to book a show or trying to be the business person. Um, you know, the, I mean, dealing with all females in Zepparella, you know, but they're a machine, they've been around for 20 years, you know yeah. what I mean? But our booking agent is female, the whole band's female, the, the manager's female. Um, now we have a, a reputation. So as a female artist, I think what precedes your reputation is your music, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're able to say, hey, I have a band, I want to book this show, here's my music. If they listen to the music and they say, oh, you know what, it's a great band, or listen to music, uh, not my thing, you know? Right. So I think it's more, it's, it's definitely comes down to the music and the performance and like how well you can deliver. Um, but I feel like there's still stigmas in the industry. Yeah, you're not the as I do these interviews, you're not the first female artist who, who said that. And uh, you know, the genres that I've had that discussion in were in, you know, country music and pop music. And I'm just always curious, you know, like is it is it genre based or is it really just industry based? And and they everybody kind of says, Well, we we're kind of turning the corner, but a lot of what you said, I have to really prove myself. I have to prove myself differently. The conversations are different. So I'm hoping that some of this messaging we we help change the the perception and the conversation out there holly and and i appreciate the talents that uh, someone like yourself brings uh brings for all the different fans um you mentioned zeparella a few times what do your zeparella bandmates think of uh of the of the dead groove band they really love it um yeah. they're super super supportive i got very lucky to be hooked up with these three women that we literally have no egos. Um, everybody's very supportive. They also have their own projects. I mean, each of them have multiple records out of their own. They, are, they all still tour and, and do shows on their own. Um, so Zepparella, I feel like, is a, a good way for us to come together as musicians and celebrate the legacy of, of Zeppelin because there's nothing like a like live Led Zeppelin. Um, and so that that is what we keep as our, you know, our base. But like we're all very, um, you know, uh, involved in a lot of different other aspects of the music communities. And so being able to express that, it's, it's really nice to have, you know, they, are, they encourage that a lot. That's right on. It sounds uh, so a, supportive, a supportive group. So uh, even though we're talking dead group, folks can check out your other, your other uh, band there, Zepparella is yeah. like is yeah, your we home tour base. A lot, so we're, yeah. We're, for sure. have you are you coming up to canada i always have to ask are you coming up to canada no <laughs> you know um <laughs> it, it's an immigration thing and you know um, you're playing in a different you know it's it's there's a lot of things that go into like going to a different country to to work yeah uh, we're having the same problems with right now with um our guitar player caesar he's not from here Fred isn't either from here, but he uh, he lives here now. He's you know he's not a citizen, but he has his green you know his yeah. you know he's able to stay here. But Caesar's a different story, and so we have to petition for him. And so we're in the middle of that um, right now. Uh, we're having Jeff Young from Me ex Megadeth and current Kings of Thrash uh, fill in um, on guitar for us as we do these next shows through the end of the year. Um, but for right now, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to co go country to country to, to perform as a group. Well, I'll have to come on. I'll have to find you and come on the other side. Maybe Michigan. Well, we're going to be in New York. We're going to be in New York at the, oh, cutting yeah? room, at the cutting room next month. That's not Cutting room, far, New York. <laughs> yeah, the 20th. I'm heading down to Florida. Are you going to be down in Florida? <laughs> no, we're not going to be in Florida. Uh, we're trying to. My parents just moved down there, so I'd like to get down there. Oh, right on. I'll have to look them up if they let. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, hi, all these parents. Um, no. Um, so, <laughs> they love, they love <laughs> so, so you talked that we've been talking about your bandmates and, and so on drums, you've got, uh, you know, the seasoned Fred Aching and, mm -hmm. and on guitarist, you've got Caesar. I hope I say his, na his last name correctly. Uh, Salavri. It's, yeah, Salivary. Uh, I don't really, I don't even think I pronounce it the right way. But Sal forgive me, forgive me, Caesar. <laughs> but but he uh, doesn't speak English, so he doesn't know. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
he's gonna figure this um, out and find me no <laughs> yeah actually yeah so we have fred and, and caesar um yeah fred uh is i mean he's badass i don't know what else to say like he's just he's got it um he's uh very dedicated to his his drumming and anything that he puts you know that he wants to do he's very dedicated and so uh, it's it's really great to work with him and um, him and Caesar obviously speak Spanish so they can kind of work together a little closer, which is great. And so, um, you know, they work together uh, via the Internet, um, you know, passing along uh, ideas and, um, you know, coming up with things and whatnot. And so he's Fred's like our little liaison between me and Caesar and. <laughs> You know. That's awesome. And it's awesome that you're coordinating and making it all work. Um, Caesar has quite the large music presence in Peru. He's yeah. he's also a vocal coach on The Voice of Peru. And he yeah. tours with another band called uh, Mauser, Mauser Mauser. Of Peru, Mauser of Mauser, Peru. Yeah. Um, what what how did you all get together? Like, obviously, you and Fred kind of know each other. But how did the trio come together and, and uh, you know, make up Dead Groove? Yeah, it's a good question because we're in two different countries, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Fred and Caesar are from Peru, and they and Fred actually used to be the drummer for Mauser um, when they were touring. And so, of course, you know, they've all been friends. Um, Fred and I, we started jamming together as like our first, like, uh, like when we first started hanging out, we were jamming together. And um, we did this thing called uh, the Fred and Holly show. And uh, we did just drum and bass and, you know, it got to the point where we're like, okay, let's just make our own music. So Fred was uh, talking to Caesar and was like, well, you know, we could just do a couple songs and see how it goes. And um, I had, uh, I had written Maverick as a acoustic blues song. Um, and I was like, well, I've got this song. I think it'd be a really cool rock song. Uh, Cause any, if you can make a good acoustic song and you can, you can make it into a good rock song, you know? Um, so we started with that and then, um, we came up with, you know, <clears throat> kind of this other concept of like, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Fred and, uh, Caesar started working on, on Book of the Dead, which is like oh, yeah. real, riffy, you know, so we have like this bluesy song and then we have this like real riffy song. And so we just started, um, you know, passing demos back and forth. Um, and, uh, you know, this whole time that Fred was talking to Caesar, Caesar actually kind of wanted to quit playing guitar. He was kind of oh, done. Wow. I know it was crazy. And, and we're like, no, you can't do that. Wow. <laughs> so, so this, uh, this um, project kind of revived him a little bit to, to, you know, have something to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, Caesar, so, Caesar, you're too good to quit guitar. <laughs> Don't quit. <laughs> great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we really, I mean, Fred definitely picked a good, friend to work with for yeah. sure he's very professional he's um obviously you know been in the industry for a long time um his riffs are great his solos are even better you know like some of his solos are super memorable which is what you want and yeah. solo, you know and um, his tone is great and he just has the right vision and vibe with us and i call him rock and roll jesus i think he's gonna kind of revive rock and you roll. know what <laughs> when you see somebody like caesar right and and you see them play and you hear them and and when those two things the way they happen together and they're they're organic they're flawless uh and i've said it i've said it with some other guitarists right like when you see them them in the guitar and you see them as one you mm -hmm. know you have something special right mm -hmm. and and i think you, when you say you know it's me he's memorable he is and that and that's what makes him memorable is you just go Wow, like I hold a guitar and you know I'm holding a guitar, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's just where where I'm at talent wise. You know I'm holding a guitar. But someone like Caesar, he's holding a guitar and you almost don't even see the guitar. You yeah, see like, him and you hear the sound. Yeah, like and, slash. Like you just Yeah, that. right? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Like yeah, it, it's that kind of vibe, right? So yeah, hats off to Caesar. So um you talked about Fred a, a bit. And mm -hmm. and Fred's a total power drummer. He's yeah. got a lot of miles on him, fun miles, you yeah. know, on those skins. He's played with uh, Power Flow, uh, Cypress Hill, yeah, Billy Cypress Bile, Hill. Bullet well, Boys. He plays with uh, Bullet Boys. Um, Kings of Thrash. Kings of Thrash, yeah. Yeah. So he, like, he's banged across all these different genres, rock, <laughs> metal, hip hop, funk, fusion. Yeah. Um, but then you got to think about like where he came from in Peru. His father was a percussionist, a hand percussionist. So oh. he, he's, he started all on, you know, that, that kind of native music there. 
and then went into rock and roll and all these other genres. And so, yeah, he's played pretty much every single genre across the, the board. So this is this is in Fred's. All. It's in his DNA. Like he he's been doing this since he was a little boy. <laughs> yeah, he has literally. Um, yeah. His first the uh, first. Uh, thing that happened when he was younger was because his father's a drummer right so yeah. he obviously had a little bit of influence that but with that but when he was really young his parents caught him like uh playing drums to like a nirvana song and they're like okay this is gonna work <laughs> <laughs> so so they you know they started his, his dad started teaching him and um by the time he was a teenager he was touring with his dad and and um, teching for him so, so what when he does the 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 dead groove um sound what what does he lean on like what's he bringing out of all that stuff like is it something different is it a mix is it yeah that's a good question um he does have a mix of a lot of those things um in fact when we were writing the record you know there's some mix of you know uh some not i wouldn't say bullet boys like but it's a rock and roll you know hard rock obviously yeah. Then there's some some of our heavier songs or harder songs, faster songs, whatever, um, that are, um, you know, uh, Megadeth inspired. So there are these little um, elements there. If you listen to uh, Book of the Dead, it's got some very, um, you know, uh, tribal kind of sound in there. Um, you know, he's, he's a virtuoso on the drums, which is great. And, you know, you would think at his level, he would just, you know, everything's great, right? But he's just he's always constantly trying to get better so that's what also makes him um you know very important is you know if you have a if you have a, a musician that's always striving to be better that's like it's almost unheard of <laughs> that's that's what you know that's what good musicians do is they always try to get better and and sometimes we talk about sport and athletes and good athletes always want to be great athletes right and you know i always hear it from from the different musicians and the artists i talk to is they never stop practicing they never stop wanting to learn uh you know new always challenging themselves and doing something different and pushing themselves out of the comfort and it sounds like that's what fred does he puts himself you know different comfort zones every time right absolutely yeah and he's he's done a lot of tribute bands too like um system of a down pantera um <laughs> You know, there's I think Alice in Chains and stuff, and so all know. of those elements really uh, flow in to what we're doing as well. You know, um, I, I feel like we all have these big influences in our life that just pour out when we when we make the the, uh, the original music. Um, we still have this kind of stoner rock, hard rock goal in mind. You know, can't steer too far from that, but we still enjoy throwing our influences in there. You know, this is the second time in three or four weeks that somebody said the word stoner rock uh, <laughs> in, in an interview. Is it making a comeback? Like, because because stoner rock was a thing. Like when I was in high school, we'd say, yeah, oh, yeah, stoner rock. Right. Like, I think it should because like grunge has come back kind of. Yeah. You know? like, there's some 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 things that have come back a little bit. Um, you know, stoner rock is just like real sludgy and yeah. uh, instrumental and stuff. And you hear that with um the first two tracks, I mean, you hear, especially in Maverick, we put the whole interlude in the middle uh, for the musical interlude for the stoner rock kind of feel. Um, and you've got some kind of, somebody said Delta Blues, you know, style to it. And it's, it is a blues yeah. song. So, uh, it's really cool um, to be able to take these different elements that we like and be creative with them and put something out that we, we, eventually you know we we like the product we like what comes out of it and and make a dead groove sound is what yeah. it comes down to exactly. um, the band named dead groove mm -hmm. where did that come from what what do we what do we listen when we <laughs> dead groove what's that all about yeah. well dead grooves are like dead grooves on a record you know so like uh we want you to play our songs so much that you get dead grooves i love it you know <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like the gist of it but um you know, we were coming up with um, a clothing brand. Uh, yeah. First. Yeah. So our clothing ba brand, uh, because Fred is a uh, uh, a graphic artist, um, and he uh, he's been doing it for a really long time. He's had a couple of clothing companies before, but he wanted to, um, you know, obviously revamp these designs and stuff and, and put them out there. And so we started this website called DeadGrooveClothing.com. And we started just putting out um, clothing. I actually have uh, these, uh, these leggings with our. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so we have like all kinds of stuff like that um, with all of his designs on them. And so uh, we came up with that name, just kind of passing on names. You know, like if you if you ever been in a band, you know, the band name is really hard to figure out. I mean, it's yeah. huge to figure out the perfect band name. So it took us a little while. We finally came up with Dead Groove Clothing. We thought that was really cool. And it kind of represented what, you know, Groove for music and, you know, dead for something edgy you know kind of our all well, our style you know it's a lot of skulls and, and creepy stuff uh, <laughs> so um and then the dead grooves on the record you know it just kind of came together and then um and then when we did the the band we kind of had to figure out if we were going to call it dead groove and have like a whole blanket you know a whole umbrella of these dead groove you know businesses mm -hmm. Or uh, we were suggesting to call the band Maverick, which was, uh, you know, after our, our single. And we decided on the, you know, to go ahead and go with Dead Groove, obviously. Yeah. No, I like it. I dig, I dig Dead Groove. And I was going to ask you about the clothing. I'm, I'm looking at it on one of my other monitors yeah. over there. And you've got the leggings, you've got jackets, you've got sweaters. It's like a whole clothing line. Yeah, and completely. I was going to say to you, like, who designed it? Because there's some really cool... Yeah, we designed it ourselves. We did everything ourselves. So Fred will come up with the the designs, um, or I'll I'll make some suggestions or whatever, um, and then I'll go or what we both kind of do. We go on and we make the t-shirts and the you know we design the clothing. Um, I did, I I wanted to do the leggings because um, you know like I I love leggings. So um, I was like, well, how can I put these designs on these leggings? And so um, I came up with like just the one side, and you have. There's like a pocket and stuff, and you know, it's it's fun to design stuff, right? No, that's awesome. So dead deadgrooveclothing.com. I'll mm -hmm. throw that in the notes because uh, yeah. I was excited when I saw that. I was like, so when you do when you go and do shows, are you bringing some of that merch with you? And oh yeah, yeah, we, oh, we sell all of our own merch uh, there, and so we have like um, you know our just regular dead groove, and then we have um, this design that Fred did for the Book of the Dead, so it has all yeah. these Egyptian things on it. Um, it kind of tells the story of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and um, so we've got like, a, you know, we have, yeah, we have some other stuff, you know, we throw in there and, and whatnot. But uh, we're about to have record, uh, like vinyls. Uh, we'll oh, right on. Coming out, so so we do have merch, and that was one thing that was really good about going with Dead Group Clothing and Dead Group Band is like, okay, well, we already have a a, a whole clothing line. We have a whole website dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, it goes hand in hand. Look, you've and it's awesome. I love the clothing. We'll, we'll throw that in here. You you've mentioned Maverick and the Book of the Dead uh, a couple of times, um, and, and you these are your your first two tracks that you kind of locked in. You did them in in Lima, Peru. Mm -hmm. um, now I know you said you know uh, Caesar's from there, but is that was that the catalyst? Like, what draws an LA based rock band to go into Peru and and record the singles? Was it just circumstance or it is a lot of circumstance. Yeah. I mean, it is obviously cheaper to do it down there, but um, oh. also so that we could be with Caesar, because um, Caesar is a vocal coach, and he wanted to make sure he had you know full control on coaching me with vocals and stuff, uh, which was great. You know, he killed me, but it was great. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was also you know Fred's family is there, and so. The for, when we went the first time, we went to do just the two songs, Maverick and the Book of the Dead, because this was just a preliminary before we got signed or anything, yeah. before anything happened. We just wanted to do these two songs, put them out there, see how they would do. And so uh, we went the first time, uh, recorded the two songs, and then we even went to Machu Picchu and like just did a lot of traveling, and they came home. And then a few a couple months later, after the songs came out and they were doing really good, we got signed to the record label. And then they paid for us to go back and finish the record. So we went right. to, to the whole record is done in the same studios. So, and you mentioned you got signed. That's with, is it Rock Avenue Records USA? Yeah. So you, you got signed with that label. Congratulations on, on that. Uh, and so you end up doing the whole album. You're in, in Lima, Peru. You do the whole album there. Yeah. Do we get, do we get some Lima, Peru vibes in the album? Like does the, does the environment so. influence the in the background of some of the drum tracks did you say <laughs> you didn't yeah. say chickens did you um yeah so where we would track the drums 
it's, it's Peru. <laughs> uh, where we track the drums, uh, the the guy that tracks them, he does, he pretty much does all, like a lot of drum tracking at his house and stuff. But there are chickens or roosters, and they are crowing the whole time. And I think there is one kind of hidden in one of the songs. <laughs> Should we? Can you? Are you going to tell us which one? Or are you going to? We have to buy the album to find the rooster. To figure it out. I don't remember which song, but I remember hearing it and going, oh my God, there's the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. does, the, does the rooster have a name? I don't know. There's so many of them. I, I just think that he should, if the rooster has a name, it should get credit. Like I'm just. Totally should get credit. <laughs> I'm advocate animal advocacy here. I'm just saying. <laughs> Earl the rooster. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, I so I was thinking like, you know, did the did the culture of Peru seep into the songs, <laughs> not the animals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you have two two people from Peru of a three piece group, so yeah. definitely. I mean, there's definitely vibes in there. Um, and when you listen to Peruvian music versus uh, North American music, it's very different, you know. Um, even the rock is quite different. Yeah. Uh, it's similar, but it's not like, you know, exactly like what we have up here. So um, there definitely are aspects of the record that are more like I would feel go better in a Peruvian set than, than here. Um, just because, you know, that's just part of what the band is, you yeah. know, the band is influenced by how we grew up, right. And what we listened to and, and what influenced us. So them being down there and being heavily influenced by, by, you know, the music they're listening to or, you know, but their culture as well. Now, it's hard are, to explain, though. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not disparaging any fans. Are the fans different in Peru? Like, do you get a different fan vibe down down in Peru? Or um, Fans in Peru are ecstatic about anything that has to do with what they like. Here, I think you have to really impress people to, to like, you know, to, to, to figure it out. You know, if a band sounds similar to something they like, they'll like it up here, you know. Yeah. Down there, if it's the rock genre and it's prevalent and and you know it's catchy enough, then they'll they'll love it. They're in. Um, I I we the first time we I went to Peru um, to visit with Fred, um, we played at this uh, this place where we're, we're actually gonna play when we go back into Peru. But uh, I I played a couple songs with um, with the Pantera tribute. And um, they didn't know me at all, but I was one of the only, you know, there's not a lot of female musicians down there. And so I walked on stage with the bass and they just went insane. And I remember playing at one point and my microphone went over like the railing and these guys just helped me, you know, get it back up into my face. It was like, they're just like, no, you wouldn't really see that too much in America. You more well, like we'd, we'd take on. they'd take the microphone and run in America. I got <laughs> the microphone. That's possible. But you'd also see them go, well, "What do we do? What do we do?" You know, because I have seen that too before. Like, what do we do with this? What, can we do we help? You know, but they're just like right on it. So I mean, I feel like to to explain it well, like you just have to feel it. You just have to experience it yourself. You know, you really. It, 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 there are different vibes everywhere you go. I've, I'm a yeah. world traveler. I've been to over 60 countries and I feel yeah. like there are a lot of places that have a great vibe and there's a lot of places that have a real shady vibe. <laughs> yeah. But either way, either way you, you play what you play and you do what you do, I imagine. So, yeah. Holly, you've got uh, 10 tracks on the, on the album. Um, Satellite King, 69 Stingery, Maverick, The Devil, Bad Friend, Silver Spoon, Play Your Hand, The Book of the Dead, Ghost, and then Into Infinity. And I, I got to ask this. When I'm looking at the website, it looks like the CD has a sleeve with pictures and lyrics. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, is that whole, real? Like, is that like... Yeah, it's a whole fold out. Like, the, yeah, the album is like a piece of art. It's great. Yeah, so it's a trifold. And then you take the um, the sleeve out, and it has all of the lyrics to all of the songs, and a big collage. And um, yeah, we've 
The great thing also is Fred is a, you know, he's a graphic designer, but he yeah. works for Cleopatra Records and he does all their albums. So or he works for who? Cleopatra Records. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so he does all their records, uh, all their designing their records oh. and CDs. So he's got really, really good at designing these these albums. And so we're very lucky to have that. So the, the sleeve alone, like... Even if I haven't heard a single song, the fact that you have a sleeve with lyrics, I and I, if, you, if people watch the show, they'd be like, man, this guy never shuts up about this. But I love holding the stuff. I love holding the CD and I love the the inserts. And uh, it just takes me back to, to younger days when, you know, you, you, I would just spend time with it. Right. I felt like I could connect. Yeah, you, the, you listen to the music and you read the lyrics. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I yeah, used to do that too. I used to wake up early before school just to do that. Yeah, just to sit there with my headphones and and read lyrics, so I would get inspired for the day to write stuff. That's and, awesome. Yeah. So with the ten tracks on that record, if 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 somebody hasn't heard you, what's the song that you say to them? Listen to the, you know, get to know us. Listen to this song. What do what do you pick off that? What's our cashmere? <laughs> <laughs> um, I. I've been thinking about this lately and I feel like it would be the book of the dead. I think so. Cause it shows, um, you know, aggressive riffs, uh, three part harmonies, um, you know, uh, it, the sound, the, the vibe, I really feel that song and the creative writing in it. You know, I feel like that song is, um, is our, you know, song that would really represent us well. Um, is the Book of the Dead the uh, anchor for the album? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's interesting because we have a few different flavors in there. You know, we've got sludgy rock in there. We've got yeah. faster, heavier stuff. And we've got like the stoner rock vibe. And um, everything's kind of based off of creative writing, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's possible, but as we, you know, at, it's just funny, the more that we start, um, doing PR for all these different, uh, songs, the yeah. more we realize that people really like this song, that people really like this song and they like this, song, you know, so I don't know what the anchor would be, but I would say if I was sending it out to people and say, Hey, check out my band, I would definitely Excellent. send them to that video because the video also, you know, we, we worked hard on that. It was yeah. really fun shoot so i mean not that we're not progressing right we're always going to progress oh yeah 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 um but so you recently your new single you recently have been releasing into infinity mm -hmm. yeah right? that's what i'm pushing right now um what's that song about where when where does that sit in the in the dead so, group universe? the cool thing about that song and it's very different from our other ones because uh, fred wrote the lyrics Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you know, how in Rush, like uh, Neil Peart was the one that wrote was the lyrics. Yeah. Right? So um, Fred really wanted to, to try his hand in writing. And um, it was it was really cool. It was the first thing he ever wrote, like oh, ever wow. tried to write. Um, and so he sent it to me because uh, we, we had picked out like subjects for these songs right because when you're in a band with someone you're in a relationship with it's really hard to write about certain subjects right so you want to leave those off the table um so i we we came up with things that we wanted to write about that weren't such low-hanging fruit i guess you know so you see like uh the book of the dead you know ghost is about an actual like ghost um satellite king is kind of about like the voyager like a, a satellite that takes off you know uh so these these concepts that have come up you know and so the book of the dead was like is very much that um and then uh the into infinity he wanted to write about something that's like uh the inf into the infinite unknown like what do we do when we're we're at, you know done with this where where do we go and so um when he wrote the lyrics you know i sat down with him and kind of uh we've we've you know put them into like a format of, of, of a song of lyrics. And so I didn't really change a lot of lyrics. They all are, are his lyrics. I just, you know, made them make sense in a song format. Yeah. And then um, I just tried to be as creative as I could with the, with the melody. 
And so now you have this song about like the infinite unknown with these big, long, drawn out melodies and stuff. That's that's Fred's first written song. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'm so proud of I'm so proud of him. And every time like something really cool happens with the song, I'm like, oh, it's your song, <laughs> you know. Right it's, on, it's Fred. A big feeling, you know. I I have many songs that I've written lyrics and stuff, and it is a great feeling when you hear like yeah. you hear your words being expressed. It's it's really magical. And you hear somebody else singing your words, then then it's even different, right? Because nobody can when you're a drummer, nobody you know it's. The, dr the other drummers who want to copy you will play your drums, but the, the average fan is just kind of doing their thing, right? So yeah. um, so it, it's interesting. You brought up, you have a, a few rules of engagement because because of, you you know, you're in a relationship <laughs> yeah. with Fred. So yeah. um, no love songs, no, hey, yeah, you yeah, took yeah. my toothpaste songs or, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, we don't really talk about past relationships and, you know, right. like, to have our feelings out on the table um you know uh, as we go through life you know we really just want to have um songs that are going to be classic to us and not like songs for the moment um so we don't really want to you know talk about things that come up or have come up in the past it's yeah. just more like let's talk about satellites and the book of the dead and you know <laughs> fast cars and there's plenty of stuff to work with, you know, and I like it because I get to be really creative. Uh, I love creative writing. So it's, that's it's right on. So uh, who's your typical Dead Groove fan then? Like you have you have all these different um, and and you've kind of talked about some uh, other bands like you've mentioned Megadeth a couple of times and whatnot. But um, who's your typical Dead Groove fan? Could you know uh, people who like hard rock? Um, people who like, uh, like Alice in Chains or, um, all the way up to like, uh, Sabbath, um, you know, people who are into, uh, uh, stoner rock, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just people that like rockers in general, like people who are like ready to rock, <laughs> you know? If you wear a leather jacket, you're listening to Dead Group, <laughs> right? Like that's, <laughs> if you ride a motorcycle, you're listening to Dead Group. No, I don't know, man. I, I have a, I have like a, a van, like, so, <laughs> and I'll listen to dad Groove, So it could be anybody. <laughs> um, you've been touring the record the last uh, few months on the West coast. Uh, I know you've got some shows in, in Jersey, Arizona, Utah, California, of course, New Mexico, Dallas, uh, is home Dallas, uh, Peru, I think too. Right. When we go to, uh, a dead groove show, what what should we expect? What are we going to see? Well, at the moment, you won't see Caesar on guitar. Um, <laughs> you'll see Jeff Young. Yeah, uh, he's great. He's a really great guitar player, a great performer. Um, you know, it, you'll see three people performing. I mean, we we do perform, even though I have a microphone I'm glued to with my bass. I mean, we're still you know performing. Um, it's a power trio. Uh, so you'll get the big wall of sound from three people, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's, uh, you know, people are just now getting to where they're finding our music. So I think people that have been at the recent Get Dead Groove shows, some of them know that they're there for Dead Groove, some of them are for other bands. But we typically have at least one or two people that become super obsessive fans after they've seen us. It's cool. It's really cool. We'll get like a like a, a, a mega fan at every show. Um, right on. You know, at, when we played in San Diego, there was one guy that wouldn't leave our merch table because he was just so impressed with the band, just wanted to talk to us while the headliner was, you know, playing. It was really cool. So um, <laughs> you, you might fall in love with us. <laughs> so that's good. Fall in love with them. But no. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about fans and, and talking with fans. Uh, you're obviously on all sorts of social media. Um, do you have a go to spot where fans can watch your videos, um, buy music, e interact with you if they if they want to? And, and if you will. Yeah, I mean, we're on, you know, Facebook and Instagram are, are, are big ones for social media. We do have a Twitter. We don't really I don't I don't I don't check it at all. But um as far as Instagram and, and Facebook, we definitely, you know, daily, you know, keep up with that. Um, our website has everything. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really have like a chat or anything that you can get a hold of us. Uh, we have a, a, a or an email on there, but 
for the most part, all of our up-to-date uh, shows are on there. I just updated them actually before this interview. Um, all the links, um, our bio, more links to everything, all the interviews we do and, and, and anything that's pushing the record right now. Um, links to buy the, the record or the CD, uh, pre-sales for the record will go up pretty soon. Um, all of our up-to-date uh, videos, and speaking of um, videos and Into Infinity, we are releasing a video for that very, very soon, and it's all AI prompted. No way. The whole thing is AI. It is like an acid trip. It's crazy. I can't wait. I just did a yeah. whole segment on artificial intelligence on one of my other shows, so yeah. I'm pumped up about it. I, you you got to let me know. Let me know when that yeah, happens. Yeah. Yeah, one thing that Fred does, um, you know, he when, with designing is sometimes they they ask him to do these AI things so that uh, it's awesome. it's crazy. It's really crazy. So we started prompting AI videos um, with descriptions of what we're singing about, right? Yeah. And so it's come up with some really incredible, like very Alex Gray look, you know, scene scene kind of thing, and. Um, I mean, you really feel like you're tripping on acid and mushrooms and just like going through this crazy alternate rea alternate, al alternate reality. It's it's awesome. And we're going to release it very, very soon. It's it's almost ready. August, early August, we're thinking, mid-August. We really hope so. Yeah, yeah. Right uh, but there is one thing that we're going to do. Um, it'll come out later this year. Cleopatra Records is having us do one of their compilation CDs. Um, so they have like uh, Cherry Curry, speaking of the Runaways, um, who else? Uh, uh, miss it, missing Persons, um, it's, a, uh, it's a bunch of other like really awesome, awesome female um, artists. Yeah. And we're doing, uh, we're doing a, um, a, 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 it's a Taylor Swift remake CD. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a Taylor Swift song um as as dead group basically you're you're amping up taylor swift it's crazy oh yeah tiffany tiffany the mall singer she's gonna be on it too <laughs> wow so so this is yeah it's it's weird it's very different for us for like i mean it's not an artist that i think we would actually choose but it's a really good thing for us to do with you know with cleopatra records they do a lot of these compilation albums they have these big performers come on and do these songs but we don't have to do the song. We're not doing the song just like Taylor Swift. We're doing it in a different style, like a hard rock style. So it's gonna right be on. Cool. Looking forward to that. Very couple cool. of couple of cool things coming coming down the line here. So yeah, excited. Yeah yeah. 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 So look, Holly, uh, we talked about the the clothing, the Dead Groove Clothing dot com. We've got uh, Dead Groove Band dot com for websites. You're on Instagram. You're on Facebook. Uh, I appreciate this so much. I've had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, I'm looking forward to all the new um, uh, media that you're going to be generating, the AI and everything. Uh, before I let you go, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with? Um, before I know you're going to make more great music with Fred <laughs> and Caesar. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to try to um, even do a couple of songs at the end of the year. Fingers crossed that it works out while we're in Peru. We'll see what happens. Um, just really really busy but yeah if if your listeners like hard rock i mean just put on put on a song and see if you like it and if you do we're probably going to be at a city near you this year um so we're going to be touring all year um we're starting up in the uh northeast and then we're going to be coming uh west coast and then mid midwest and southern and then back to peru so we're going to be everywhere this year and then next year, hopefully even more places. So, And you'll post that on the website. We'll, you'll have the, right it's all on the website. Um, so that's awesome. And I've got your song spinning over on the pathradio.com. Um, so if folks want to listen to that, head on over there. Um, it's so you could hear it many times throughout the day. Hint, hint, hint. So thank you, Holly West, for taking us into infinity. Hey, Fred. With our chat tonight, I will have Dead Groove social media website and merch links in the show notes. You can also listen to, uh, to them, uh, to Dead Groove on thepathradio.com where their tunes will be spinning. Keep on rock, uh, rocking and hope to have you back. Absolutely. Take care, Holly. Thank you.